Hello, Anatoly. For a long time, we were going to shoot an interview with you, but never succeeded. And people are asking for it. We receive a flurry of requests. Everyone wants to see you, but you are always busy, so we can't make a day of it. That's why we decided to choose this modern format for the interview. Moreover, we are in different countries. We are here in Minsk. You are now on a business trip. And I would like to start with this question. What's your exact location? Why have you been off the air for so long with your video blogs, which your channel subscribers like so much? Hello. I am in the United Arab Emirates, far away from my homeland, on a business trip. It's a very busy schedule here. There is not much time for blogs. Although I am in social networks, both I and my followers post quite a lot of information about our business and me. But there is no time for just blogging and to share my thoughts about current events and life in general is probably not the main thing. Now we need to talk about business, about what we do and what results we have achieved. That begs the next question. And that's also something that everyone is curious about. Despite the fact that news do come out with great regularity on the websites of both Uskai Center in Sharjah and of UNISKI String Technologies Incorporated, people nevertheless want to hear firsthand what important and interesting things have happened recently. Well, I would start with the United Arab Emirates, since you are there now. What are you doing? What's going on in terms of the project implementation progress? I am in one of our offices right now, in Dubai, in the Free Economic Zone. Here we are working on the marketing company, which will allow us to actively develop projects around the globe. That is why I am here. We are working on many projects, but I cannot be specific about it for some reasons. Because unfair competition has always been around. After all, the closer we are to entering the market, the stronger the competition is. Besides, in most countries, including thanks to our activities, including as part of Expo 2020, they began to understand that the future belongs to the second level transport and not to the first level one. There are many reasons. We can see this in cable ways, in particular. Previously, cable cars were used for amusement rides or haulage, and somewhere they took tourists to the mountains. Now this type of transport is more and more seen as urban. At the same time, cable cars have a huge number of disadvantages. For example, they have limited the track length. It is equal to the length of the cable produced by the industry. If the route is longer than 10 kilometers, you have to make a new route and passengers have to transfer. And this transport is not self-driving. The cabins are pulled by the cable itself. It requires a lot of energy. We know this because we are now working in a number of countries where cableways were prioritized. Here, for example, is some more data that we received from them, which we were a bit surprised about. I assumed that the cable must be replaced every 10 years, but we were told that it must be replaced every 3-4 years. Because in the tropics, where humidity is high and sea salts are in the air, cables corrode quickly and deteriorate. Just imagine, 
if a cableway is going to run up 100 years, you have to stop the line 30 times to replace the cables. And there are many other disadvantages that our string technology does not have. UST Transport is self-driving. In fact, it's a kind of a street car. Steel wheels roll on a steel rail. The supporting element is a string rail, which is protected by an armored skin and composite material against mechanical damage and climate impacts, humidity, corrosion and such. Energy loss in the rolling of a steel wheel on a steel rail is five times lower than that of a wheel on the cable. And there were a number of other advantages in the string technology. One of them is that it is cheaper than cableways, which may seem strange. But nevertheless, we are negotiating in many countries that are oriented towards cableways. And they say that cable cars cost about 20 million per kilometer. We have always noted that the cost of string trucks is lower. Of course, it all depends on the terrain the truck traverses, the height of the truck structure, the length of the spans and other factors. The cost can be around 7 million, 8 million, 10 million or 15 million. But never 20 million US dollars. Our technology is cheaper, better, more reliable and more durable. We had a lot of delegations at Expo 2020. And I can tell you now that during these meetings and after them we began an active work, which is why I'm here. Again, these meetings launched active work, which required my personal presence. The exhibition was held not far from our U-Sky Center, so it was easy enough to reach us. And it was me who chose this format, because we were offered to place our stand in a pavilion at Expo 2020, but it would have cost about 10 million US dollars. At the same time, we would not have been able to demonstrate the existing tracks in operation and would not have been able to take people for a ride by this transport. People would only have been able to look at it on the screen, at the book, at the leaflets. That's why we chose this format. We deployed our own exhibition in Sharjah, next to the venue of Expo. And during Expo 2020, we were visited by more than a hundred delegations. These were more than 500 representatives of large businesses, more than 50 world-class politicians, more than 40 ambassadors and diplomats with the rank of council, about 1,000 governors of regions, mayors and high-ranking government officials, more than 30 ministers, two members of the royal family and a king. Yes, we were visited by a king as well. He took a ride on a U-Pod and was very impressed. Even the Royal Guard had no questions about the safety of the certified string transport. Because our complex is certified and can carry even royalty. Let me list at least some of the countries which brought delegations to us. They are UAE, Saudi Arabia, USA, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Germany, Turkey, Egypt, India, Pakistan, Vietnam, Iraq, Qatar, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Rwanda, Malaysia, Indonesia, China, Iran, Switzerland, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, Czech Republic, Romania, Estonia, Nigeria, Colombia, Croatia, Tunisia, Peru, Lesotho, Dominica and other countries. There were more than 60 of them. 
most of the visits produced a strong interest in the transport and infrastructure solutions of Unitsky String Technologies Incorporated. We began active work with the representatives of the majority of these countries to move towards marketing of targeted projects in these countries. Our parent engineering company, Unitsky String Technologies Incorporated in Minsk, has now become actively involved in these activities. The work includes dozens of directions and dozens of targeted projects. These are cargo systems, as well as urban and intercity ones. So, naturally, it is the engineering resources of the group of companies and the project office that play the key role at the current stage. And the marketing company in Dubai, where I am now, also performs important functions. Most meetings with clients take place here, but negotiations are also held in Sharjah. There are also those who come to the Eco Techno Park in Marina Gorka to see, among other things, how our complexes and systems operate in northern latitudes, where there is frost and snow. <laughs> Anatoly, am I correct to assume that the interest that was expressed at the Expo and what you're talking about, I mean, the enormous attention from a huge range of customers, confirms that you were right in the first place. As far as I know, right now all the world is engaged in promising second-level transport systems. The US has companies, and there are manufacturers in Israel, Great Britain and France. For example, Poma Ropeways, as far as I know, are currently developing a number of solutions for the second-level transportation, not for tourism purposes. They are trying to create a full-fledged transportation system, which is something you talked about 20 years ago. Is it possible to believe that your time commitment and that fact that you turned out to have more foresight have put you so far ahead of the manufacturers now trying to catch up with you? Is that right? We are building two more lines, 2.4 kilometers each. The anchor supports on the first line are already built. On the second line, the anchor supports are still being built. And these are not just anchor supports. They are integrated with stations and depots. These tracks are designed for a heavier load. In terms of this parameter, they outperform those complexes that we implemented earlier. To explain the differences, I should remind that the string rail overpass is a sort of bridges and overpasses. It is no secret that the cost of an overpass depends on the load it is designed for. It is one thing to make an overpass for cyclists, and it's quite another thing when cargo trains are to move on it. The cost will be different. So the engineering solutions must be different, as well as the consumption of materials and other things. And the two lines we are building are designed for the travel of heavy vehicles. Before that, we used lighter ones that weighed no more than 10 tons, which is the weight of loaded cars. The lines we are building are designed for shipping containers weighing up to 35 tons. These are 40-foot containers. It is about 60 tons combined with the weight of the car. This is the weight of a heavy tank. And we designed such a track to show that our transport is able to cross mountains and other obstacles. To do this, we made a system with the long spans of 288 meters between the supports. So the load increased. And the spans increased as well. The anchor supports, of course, are designed for greater loads. 
альтернативні канали, де я тільки мав це робити, і люди не треба обрати канали. Each of the anchor assemblies, which we are now installing, can withstand about 1,000 tons of tension. What is 1,000 tons? That's 10 cars fully loaded with ore, if you think about it. And if you suspend them, you can get the same load of 1,000 tons. And one, it may seem small anchor support, is able to withstand such a load. And this force is horizontal, not vertical. And we know how to design and build all of this. We set world records. A whole transport and infrastructure complex has already been certified, which includes not only rolling stock, U-pods, but also stations, depot, control room, intermediate supports, anchor nodes, switches, and other components. But this is the fourth generation. And today we are already designing the fifth generation. Transport, track structure, and other components of the complex. This is completely different machinery, even more advanced. And in this regard, we are naturally ahead of the competitors. The new U-Pod that we designed and produced is now being tested in Belarus. Then it will be shipped to the U-Sky Center, and we will demonstrate the capabilities of a fifth-generation vehicle. Such vehicles are capable of forming couplings similar to those of trains. Thus, we are entering the market not only with what we demonstrate, but also with more advanced machinery. Some say that Unitsky set up a design office in Minsk and named it Unitsky String Technologies Incorporated. But many people don't realize that we have not just one design office, but more than 50 of them, which are united in one company, Unitsky String Technologies Incorporated. After all, the most sophisticated complex is made up of many different components. And a particular design office is responsible for each of them. For example, one specializes in designing rails, while another focuses on motor wheels. These are completely different tasks. It is one thing, for example, to produce a reliable frame for a U-Bus, and another thing to make a reliable support or anchor assembly. These are completely different areas, each of which should be handled by high-skilled specialists. And we have all that. In fact, I have managed, and I'm proud to say this, to create not just one school, but several – scientific, design and engineering schools for the string technology. After all, engineering and designing are different things. It is one thing to install supports, make foundations, design components of the complex, taking into account the specific soil, loose soils, swamp, sand or just ordinary ground, etc. This is designing. But it is another thing to design a car and its components. Hence, there is engineering and designing. So let me repeat. We have three scientific schools. This is confirmed by the fact that we have already received over 100 patents, invention certificates, design certificates, and trademark certificates. Dozens of scientific works have been published, including five scientific monographs over the past three years. Yes, Anatoly, it is really impressive. The amount of work, the scale of the activities that are going on in both Unitsky String Technologies Incorporated and the U-Sky Center, and the figures you voiced for the number of delegations, people and top-ranking officials who visited the U-Sky Center speak for themselves. The number of ongoing projects is also staggering. Despite what is going on in the world, I see that you are full of optimism. So I'd like to ask, how do you always remain optimistic? Is it knowledge, faith or hope? What is the decisive aspect of this?
I guess it's faith, trust in people. And I realized a long time ago that one is as good as none. You can only create an artwork, for example, a painting or a song by yourself. But you cannot create, let's say, an industry by yourself or a transport and infrastructure industry. Art is something individual. It's just thoughts expressed with words or paints. And the area in which we work is not just about thoughts. Yes, there must be thoughts, but they are put into practice through materialization. When thousands of cubic meters of concrete must be laid, thousands of square meters of production space and the most complex transport must be built. And thousands of engineers, scientists and specialists must be involved. How can you do all this alone? You cannot have no trust in partners and wish to make a successful project together at the same time. Without trust, nothing will happen. But unfortunately, many people perceive trust as weakness. They think, he trusts me, so he is weak. That means I can steal, take away. But in the end, the one who thinks this way ends up in prison. I had one such partner. I won't mention his name. Many people will understand who I'm talking about without it. For a certain period of time, he performed important functions in the project, including those related to investments. But he didn't work transparently, like he was dishonest. And I was getting the corresponding signals. When the situation in my mind went too far and could have led to serious problems, including in our work, I wrote an open letter. It was posted on the Internet. I declared that we do not work with this fund because its methods are unacceptable for us. We do not need their investment. All this was going on about three years ago. And recently I found out that this person was arrested. Other people who tried to abuse my trust didn't get what they wanted out of it either. Some lost a fortune, billions. There were two oligarchs among my partners. Now they are left with nothing. And some are on run now, but not from me. I am not chasing anyone. It's me who always being chased and addressed complaints. I have never done it myself, and I didn't write to the prosecutor's office or somewhere else. Nevertheless, as you can see, people who cheat on trust tend to have a miserable fate. I see, Anatoly, there is very little time left for what you have devoted for us in your schedule. This conversation, it seems to me, turned out to be very intense and versatile. One of the reasons behind it was the fact that despite numerous difficulties in the modern world and a load of problems, you retain faith, optimism about the future and even confidence that everything will be just fine. And it's not for nothing. It is clear that in this situation a lot will depend on young people. I mean those who are students today, those who are probably still in school, and those who are launching their own startups today, which are focused on creating some kind of values for society. In this context, as an experienced person in this sector, who has already launched a startup, and not just any startup, but a global startup, an industry-forming one, I would like to ask you a question. What advice would you give to people who may be following the same path as you are? 
and in which, as you say, you're already way ahead of everyone else forever. I wish them to study again and again and again, to know and understand more. And learn not only what will allow earning money. Many people believe that knowledge is only needed to make a profit. But you should study to understand how the world works. It is important to know history, to learn about traditions and religions. To understand how the universe, planets and the earth was formed. How and why we came to be and what was before us. After all, it is so interesting. It is important to understand the laws, real laws that describe how the world works. Not just the laws of business. Now it's like they teach you to take a loan at this or that interest, and then to do this or that, and then do something else to make money. That's just wrong. And it's also important to gain knowledge about yourself. We don't even know ourselves as an organism. Now there are new mainstream specialties, which I think are insignificant. Artificial intelligence, programming and such. I think it's wrong. Why is that so? Because it's like they want to replace humans with something artificial. How can you replace human? First you have to find out who you are, humans. When I got interested in the problem of artificial intelligence as an engineer, I thought about how complex our brains really are. And can artificial intelligence compare to it? If not, can artificial intelligence control us, our life, as many claim today? What, for example, about the smallest particle, DNA? It is so complex that it is more sophisticated than all the industry created in the history of mankind. Just imagine, there have been about 100 billion people living on the planet throughout history. And all these people have created with their collective intelligence is simpler than a macromolecule of DNA. I am not even talking about a cell, which is millions of times more complex, or an organ, the brain, the human body as a whole. How can artificial intelligence control all this? People assume that artificial intelligence will be able to replace humans only because they are not smart enough. They have not received proper education and knowledge. They have only been taught how to make money, including with artificial intelligence. And people heading in this direction can ruin humanity. This threat can be compared to a situation where a monkey plays with a grenade. The animal doesn't realize that the grenade could explode. This is why we need to learn progressive knowledge that leads back to the regions of nature. And nature and physics, chemistry and mathematics. Then you have to learn how to apply that knowledge properly, not to harm. After all, you can create, for example, a bioweapon, which would get out of control and destroy humanity, including the creator of this weapon. The creator of the weapon would not be an exception. He would be destroyed either. Look how many people on the planet today are engaged in this. They receive proper education and even Nobel Prizes, but this is the wrong course. The basis of what we do and how we live should be the right knowledge and those traditions that we inherited from our ancestors. They are not random either, so we have to honor and preserve them. They form the society, 
We are social creatures, after all. We cannot exist just by ourselves. We must live in the society. And the basis of any society has always been family. So we must cherish such a social institution and not destroy it as it is happening today in the West. The family is a tool for repressing our knowledge. Children should listen to their parents and teachers who are smarter and more experienced. Only by absorbing the right knowledge one can understand his or her mission. This is important. We didn't come into being by ourselves. We came into being for a reason – to fulfill our destiny.